Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio. Um, it's Monday night, 9.30 p.m. This is Child Abuse Prevention and Human Rights Abuse Prevention is up to us. It's 30-minute live internet streaming radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com. I have my chat room open if anybody would like to sit in there. And, um, yeah, I'm happy to be here, as always. I'm so happy to be able to do these shows. Um, just, it's, it's, it's just been a, an amazing uh, time. I'm glad that, uh, you know, that it, it has gone the way it has gone. I, when I first started doing these shows, I was only doing, like, one a week or, or two a week, but I've actually incorporated... Uh, a lot of shows in, and and it it's just so good to get the information out there. And um, you know, as I'm researching and studying, right, I just thought it'd be nice to be able to share this information with people, and really just to be one more voice out there to say that we need to stop child abuse. We need to stop it now, like yesterday. But um, the more we talk about it, the more will be done to to find the solutions, right? That's the whole issue, and it's going to take you know a, a lot of work, as we know, it's an epidemic. Uh, you know the stats. If you look at the stats, it's it's, it's absolutely mind-boggling, right? How many children are abused? And when you look at the headlines, the type of abuse that these children are going through, um, this is the whole issue. This is uh, torture. This is uh, human rights abuses. This is um, this is maiming and torturing and and killing. Uh, parents are killing their children. They're, if they're not killing them, their their children are ending up in the hospital with abuse-related injuries that are just horrific. So this is why we're doing this. This is why all the advocates are out here raising our voices together just to be united uh, to say, you know, we have to stop child abuse. We really have to. It's not something we can just put off and just say, oh, with, you know, leave it up to some other generation to do it. We need to do it now. And it has to be this generation to do it. So I'm so glad to be able to do these shows. And I was looking, I have almost 6,000 shows listened to now. I think that's just amazing. Um, I appreciate everybody who's tuning in to all my shows. And I can't thank you enough, you know, for, for supporting me. And, and it gives me the, you know, it just it just makes me just want to keep going and, and keep keep talking and, and I think it's just amazing and thank you so much for being a part of my life and a part of my world and uh, you know ev- you know every day people are tuning into my shows and I really appreciate it so yeah I'm not a professional I don't hold any professional counseling certificates therapist certificates anything like that I'm just a person who, who you know studies child rights first of all I'm a part-time student at MRU here in Calgary I'm just not in any courses right now because I can't afford to take them right now and um, so I'm in between courses, uh, working on a on a certificate program, then eventually working towards a degree, well, in, in child rights and uh, child advocacy, human rights and whatnot. So, you know, as I'm researching and studying, which I do all the time, I'm finding lots of good information. I just thought I'd pass it on. And also, I'm the Canada Regional Director for Dreamcatchers for Abused Children, which makes me happy. Volunteer position that I am so happy to be a part of because they are really they are on the road to making some real change and uh, helping children and helping families, right? So you want to check out their website, our website, www.dreamcatchersforabusedchildren.com. It's updated daily and uh, all kinds of great information on that website. And we just finished uh, last week, we were talking about um, the Child Abuse Handbook, and that's what we went over for the last like couple of weeks in the evenings. And the Child Abuse Handbook, it's uh, compiled by Donna Shear, Sandra Potter, um, uh, Donna Shear being the president of Dreamcatchers for Abused Children, Sandra Potter being the CEO and founder of Dreamcatchers for Abused Children. They compiled this information from all the websites out there and um, put, the, put it together in one handbook, and that way it's easily accessible. The information is there, the resources, the links, the, 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 the information regarding signs and symptoms, how to report abuse, you know, just everything to do with child abuse and all the different kinds of child abuse. So important, and I really hope everybody will get it. It's a free PDF download. So we finished up with that on Friday night, and I wanted to um, talk about what to do if a child tells you about abuse. And this is from um, another website here in Alberta. It's... Um, it's it's www.familyviolence.alberta.ca, and the actual name of the actual article is called Child Abuse, and it, it's a great article regarding family violence and abuse, right, child abuse, and it's so such a good article. I really like it, and um, I actually use it quite a bit. Um, I, I, I work with it a lot because there's some really detailed information in there on how to report abuse and what to do if a child comes to you and tells you that they are being abused and um, if they disclose to you that they are being abused, there's some things that you need to know that we all need to know in order to to, uh, to protect that child and also to get that child some help and also to um, make sure that that, uh, that what that child discloses to you and to me needs to be recorded properly. If it's not recorded properly, the child could it could be not being it could be thrown out of court and not being allowed to be used as uh, documents to uh, to help get that child some help. And the child could end up back in the home 
uh, and the, the abuse would continue on, right, and, and that child could lose their life. So it's so important to know how to report abuse. It's very simple. It's easy. And they, But this article actually talks a lot about what's the right thing to do in this situation, right? So that's what we're going to look at tonight. And, um, yeah, if you're a young person under the age of 18, I just ask, you know, especially young people, really young children, I just ask that you have someone, um, you know, okay it, that you can listen to my shows. I have a lot of adult content on here, and I just think that young children should have permission to listen to the shows. The whole issue is I fight for child rights. I'm fighting and standing up for children's lives. I will do that for the rest of my life. And so I want I just ask young people to have permission to listen to my shows for, or or to have an adult check check out my shows because our online safety and internet safety is such a huge issue uh for children, especially for children. And it's very unsafe. And so you have to make sure that you get the information on how to stay safe online and how to keep yourself safe online and what you should be listening to and maybe what you shouldn't be listening to, age appropriateness and whatnot stuff that might be just a little bit too too much for a young person to be listening to. So it'd be a good idea if you get an adult or a parent or someone, a teacher, a coach, or someone in the family to listen to the show with you, and then they can tell you whether or not they think you should be listening to it, and then they can help you if you have questions as well about the material that we're talking about. So this is what to do if a child tells you about abuse. And um, it's a great, great article. You can pull it up at, uh, like I said, www.familyviolence dot alberta dot ca and uh, they i'm just reading right from the page here it says if a child tells you about abuse number one listen to what the child has to say without interrupting or judging number two believe the child number three assure the child that abuse is not their fault no one deserves to be hurt or abused and it says here if a child tells you about abuse do not ask for details listen to the information the child gives you Record it as soon as possible in the child's own words and be supportive and let the child know it is right to tell someone. So that's so important, right? Um, don't ask for details. Listen to what the child is telling you and then write it down and record it as soon as possible in the child's own words. Don't add anything to it and don't take anything away. Just exactly as the child said it. And be supportive and let the child know that they did the right thing by telling someone, right? And it says do. They've got like some do's and don'ts, right? So do. It says when you are with the child, uh, find a private, quiet place to listen. Listen calmly and without judging. Uh, let the child talk without interruption for as long as the child wants. If you must ask a question to understand what the child is telling you, wait until the child has stopped talking and then ask your question. Because it could throw them off topic and then they won't remember what they were talking about, right? It says, uh, reassure the child. Reassure the child that, it, that they have the right to tell. And that tell the child that the abuse is not the child's fault. And tell the child that, quote unquote, you do not deserve to be abused. Nobody does. And acknowledge how the child might be feeling. So that's very important, you know, to let them know that they did the right thing by telling. And that the abuse was not their fault, right? And that no one deserves to be abused and that they did not deserve to be abused, and just acknowledge that how they might be feeling, right? And then say, I'll try to help. Close the discussion by saying, um, you can ask, is there anything else you'd like to say now? You know, you don't want to lead them into, 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 into material. You don't want to lead them into questions, because leading questions is what gets thrown out of court. So you just have to say, is there anything else you want to add that you'd like to say now? And then explain what you will do next. It says, again, reassure the child that telling is the right thing to do and tell the child you will have to report the abuse. Someone will help them. And uh, abuse, I'm telling you people, uh, abuse is underreported. Uh, many times it is not reported. So this is the issue. Children die in, the ho in these homes where the abuse is going on because one of the parents won't get help for the child out of fear uh, because the abuser is also abusing them, possibly in a domestic violence situation, or they could be um, a, sort of uh, co-contributors to the abuse, right, by not um, getting the child some help, right, whether it's medical attention or, um, you know, getting that, that child to safety. They they just co-contributing to the abuse by not getting that child help. Quite often that's the case. We see this in, in all the headlines and whatnot out there. And it's not always a single parent that's just doing the abusing. A lot of times it's both. And, um, you know, they're in it together, the, the, the couple or the parents or the caregivers, whoever's looking after the children. Um, it's very sad and it's very unfortunate because the children pay the price and they're innocent lives. I would just ask everyone for two seconds, like, to put yourself into an abused child's shoes. Um, anyone who's been abused as a child would know what what it's like. It's so horrific. It's not even funny. Um 
to to know you know that your your parents are, are doing these terrible things to you and to know that they don't care and that there's no love there's no care um you know that's not a good way to grow up and 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 sadly a lot of them don't survive you know and they're killed by their parents or caregivers and their last moments on the earth are in pain and agony and they're just you know their their little bodies are just so broken and you know it's really shameful and disgusting and i can't believe that more people don't get up off the couch and get mad and say okay we have to fix this it's just that society doesn't want to put themselves into these children's shoes because it's so painful but if you've been abused then you would know um how sad and how horrible it really is and we know what these kids are going through out there right now so this is the whole issue um kids cannot protect themselves that's why i'm devoting the rest of my life to protect children and that's why i'm i'm doing what i'm doing i'm i'm going to spend the rest of my days on this earth um, fighting for child rights to stand up and advocate for children against abuse. So I would hope everybody would join me and get just raise your voice, start talking about it, and read the headlines. Don't just pass over them. Read the stories and see what's happening to these children. It's absolutely disgraceful and it's it's horrific. And it's too bad that we can't like you know. I'm sorry. I, I agree that you know that abuse is wrong. So abusing anyone's wrong. But it's too bad that the abusers don't get to feel what they've done to that child. Um, to me, that would be a perfect punishment. Um, it's just unfortunate that we can't do that, like eye for an eye sort of thing. But um, it's because we can't condone abuse. That's the whole issue. You can't condone abuse of any kind. But I sure wish that they could because then they, they would know what that child went through and they would know what that child had had to go through and, and to endure. And it's just horrific and horrible. And um, I, will, I hope everybody reads these headlines out here that are in the papers and and uh, takes a moment of silence for these children and 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 uh, put them in their heart and keep them in their heart and um, do something to help stop child abuse. Right? It's so important that we all get involved. And then so it says here, um, when you are no longer with the child, write down what you saw and heard as the child was talking to you. Quote the child's words as much as possible and use words that describe things you can see or hear. For example, a bruise almost covered the child's left knee and red welts were on the child's upper left arm. Um, not, for instance, the child has been hurt. That's so vague, you know, the child has been hurt. Like, I mean, that's so vague, like hurt in what way? You know what I mean? And you need to write down details of what you saw, right? If you saw bruises, if you saw welts, if you saw burns, if you saw, um, you know, strangulation marks or or anything like that. You know what I mean? If, if you see... Uh, um, you know, knots on their head and missing hair. And, you know, you really want to get descriptive and you want to write down everything that you see if this child has physical um, signs of abuse, right? And sometimes they don't. And so, so you just, then you would re maybe record how they were, um, how their, their behavior was, whether they were um, extremely nervous and uptight and if they were crying and if they were, you know what I mean? You, you want to write down all the details, like not just the child was hurt or appeared to be hurt, right? That doesn't say much, right? And then it says here, the child said, I'm scared to go home because my dad is going to be mad at me. That's what you would write down, not the child seemed afraid of the father, right? So you want to write down like all the details and make sure that you do. It says, keep your notes and information confidential and secure, but report immediately to authorities. So that's important. Don't share the information with anybody and keep it secure and report it immediately to the proper authorities. And that you could, you could save that child's life. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it says, do not. This is some do nots for us. Uh, do not interrupt the child's story. So we're not supposed to interrupt the child's story. We're supposed to let him finish talking. It says, do not overreact in front of the child. It, it says, do not show horror or anger. The child may stop talking. Do not make comments about the situation or the people because the child may stop talking, right? If you start talking about it with them, they actually might, if you overreact and you start getting angry or upset or crying, uh, the child might stop talking because they, uh, they're upset because they think they've upset you or that uh, there's something wrong with them telling you. They might think, oh, I shouldn't have said anything, right? So that's the whole issue. You, you just want to stay very calm and collected. Let them tell their story and let them express what they need to express. It says, do not express opinions or judgments about anything. The child may stop talking. Because that's the whole issue. If you start saying, oh my God, I can't believe, you know, if you start getting upset, the child might stop talking. So it's better just to have it very cool and calm. That's what they'd be looking for, somebody very stable. That's probably why they would tell you in the first place, is if you were someone they thought they could trust, you know, uh, and they finally disclose abuse to you. Um, it's probably because you are calm and collected and they would trust you that you would not 
get upset or mad at them for telling you, right? So that's the whole thing. You want to stay very calm and collected. And um, it says, do not make promises you cannot keep. So do not promise that you won't tell anyone. Legally, you must report the abuse, right? And do not promise the child what will happen. Um, do not promise the child that things will get better. Because, see, if you make these promises and then it doesn't happen, it just breaks that child one more time. Breaks that child's heart, right? Um, and then they think one thing and then it doesn't happen, so then they're confused. They think, well, why did I even bother telling if, you know what I mean? You just tell them that, that you will report it, right? And But don't promise them that things will get better, because if they don't, then they're, they're, they're going to be all confused by what they've heard. It says, do not conduct your own investigation. Do not ask leading questions. For example, did... Did this happen, blank, did this happen or that happen? Or probing questions, example, has this ever happened before? It says, do not check out the child's story before you report the abuse. That's really important because um, we're not supposed to be the investigators. We're supposed to leave that up to the people who are trained to investigate. It says, it is not up to you to decide if the child's information is true or accurate or if the child is at risk. That is the responsibility of child and family services authorities or the police. It is your responsibility to listen to the child with respect to report that a child told you about abuse and to treat the child with dignity, courtesy, and respect. And I think that's just awesome. That's what we need to do. If a child comes to us and, and tells us they're being abused, you know, it's not up to us to try to find out if they are or, you know, try to 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 take it on ourselves, right? We just need to report it and treat the child with respect and dignity and report it, right? That's so important. It says, report the abuse. If you suspect a child is being abused or neglected by a parent or guardian, report your suspicions immediately. Call the police, your local child and family services authority, or the 24-hour child abuse hotline. You know, there's all the different hotlines in front of the phone book you can call, child abuse hotlines, crisis lines, anything like that, um, local police stations, just anything to report it. You want to report the abuse, right? And it says, if you suspect someone other than a parent or guardian is abusing a child, report your suspicions immediately to the police. Look in the emergency pages of your local telephone directory to find the telephone number of the police in your area. And it says, the Child, Youth, and Family Enhancement Act ensures that children are safe and that their needs are met. The act supports families to meet the needs of their children. And children are not removed from the home unless they are unsafe and there is no other option. And uh, the Criminal Code of Canada has rules for dealing with crimes against children. And these, cl these crimes include physical and sexual assault, other sexual crimes, and not giving the child what is necessary to live. So that's just the thing. A lot of people think, oh, well, if, if I report it and then it's not true, the child will be removed from the home. And then, you know, it could be a worse situation and, and it wasn't, you know, it could be that, that you don't want to be thinking like that because a lot of times, it, I'm, I'm sorry to say it, but a lot of abused children are not removed from the homes, you know what I mean? And so the abuse just continues. Quite often they're not removed from the homes unless there's a clear, evident, um, you know, uh, um, proof that the child is going to be unsafe. You know, there has to be real proof for them to take them out. Because half the time they leave them in and then two or three months later we hear about their, you know, that they, these children have been killed, you know, because nobody got them any help, right? And, the, and the, that the abuse was reported. If you actually start looking around at the headlines, a lot of the abusers, um, you know, they, they, the abuse was reported, but the child was left in the home. And then they, we find out later that, they, that they're killed and murdered at the hands of their parents or caregivers or are sexually assaulted and they're in the hospital or whatever. You know what I mean? This is very common, and it's really sad and unfortunate. They don't remove uh, enough children, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, and then sometimes they take the wrong children. You know, they, they remove children who shouldn't be removed from their homes because they're, you know what I mean? It, it's not a perfect system. But the whole issue is is that we have to try. So just to not report it and allow it to continue is not helping the situation at all. Um, we need changes, of course. I don't work for CPS or anything like that or DHS. I'm just, you know what I mean? I, what I want to do is, is see some changes within uh, these organizations that work with the, the, these child protective services, right? Because a lot of times, you know, they make mistakes. And, I mean, they're just, it's just, it's, it's not a perfect system. But the whole issue is, is we, if we, the, the more children's lives we can save, the better. That's what I have to say. And there's been reports in the paper lately of ch horrific uh, acts being done to children, you know, by their parents and caregivers. And, um, you know, this is the, you, you wish that those children could have gotten some help and got removed from the home because they're now dead. They're lying in graves or they've been cremated or whatever. And nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to go to visit that child's grave. You know, no one's going to, no one's even going to know about that child. That child's just, the headline is just going to disappear off into infinity with all the other headlines. And uh, no one's going to care about that child losing their life 
and you know the abusers will just continue on probably have more kids after they do their jail time and whatnot and um they'll get out and they'll have more kids and they'll just do the same thing right because that's the whole issue they won't get any help psychologically and they'll just continue to do what they do it's a really pathetic situation but if we call and get that child some help, they could end up in, in a very loving home. And, and, you know, that's the whole idea is the fact that you could give that child a chance. And I think a chance is better than no chance. You know what I'm saying? A, a chance at a happy, at a happy, healthy life is way better than no chance at all. So by leaving a child in an abusive home is not the right thing to do. And besides, it's against the law. You have to report abuse. So it's just so important that we save these children's lives, and that's why we're working on programs. Uh, you know, Dreamcatchers for Abused Children has some awesome programs coming up, and um, they want to roll them out this summer. If they can get the funding, they will be doing that. And that's the whole issue. They are working on getting f- uh, federal government funding. They need donations. They need whatever they can get because it's all it's a 501c3 not-for-profit organization. They rely completely on uh, funding, you know what I mean, for to to do this. This is not a private organization. It's a it's a 501c3 uh, not for profit organization. So they are looking into funding and they are working on it. But the whole issue is is they've got some great programs coming up when they do get the funding. Uh, family to family, peer to peer. Use your voice. Uh, we're going to do a lot of educational stuff in schools. We're going to go nationwide and 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 uh, do a lot of public speaking in schools and whatnot. And we're also going to have programs, um, you know, at the, at the headquarters first, and then nationwide uh, for families and and uh, peer to peer groups for survivors, and uh, you know, for parents who are having a hard time coping and they don't want to abuse their children, but they need to learn how to parent properly, you know, parenting skills and whatnot. And also for uh, children who have been abused, there'll be summer camps. Um, to help them to learn, you know, self-esteem and to learn that they, that in a loving, caring environment, that, you know, to learn how to co- like coexist with other children and to learn that um, that the violence is not the way to go and sort of undo the damage that was done to try to undo some of it, right? So that's the whole issue. There's some great things happening and we will be doing this and uh, I hope everybody will join us and get involved. Um, it's going to be awesome, especially once it goes nationwide. And then once it goes nationwide, and, and it'll eventually come to Canada and then maybe the UK and, you know what I mean, um, it, it'll be hopefully worldwide. I really hope to see that happen. So it's just awesome. And so, you know, there's going to be good programs coming up and I'm sure, and there's other organizations doing awesome work. So I have to start looking around. Uh, LittleWarriors.ca, that's a, uh, Edmonton, Alberta. LittleWarriors.ca, they, that's an awesome website, and they are doing some awesome, amazing work. Um, they're just about one of the only groups up here that you actually see anything on. You never hear about the other groups, you know, too much. But Little Warriors, they're out there, and they are trying to make a difference and stop child sexual abuse. And uh, that's www.LittleWarriors.ca. And you should check their website out. That's a great website for parents who need to get information on how and when to start um, introducing the whole idea of good touch, bad touch to their children, age appropriateness, when to start talking to their kids about child sexual abuse, um, how to say no, you know, great information for parents on there regarding child sexual abuse. I really hope everybody will check that website out. And um, I, I, I look at it quite a bit just for information, and it's a great website. And I'm, I'm happy that it's in Alberta because um, not a whole lot of us, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, abuse is not talked about very often up here in Canada. You just don't hear too many people talking about it. But we know children are being abused up here just like they are all around the world. It's just that everybody likes to keep it under the carpet because they all want to go have a good time and nobody wants to think about it over dinner. You know, it'll spoil everybody's day, right? And, you know, especially Canadians, they don't like to have their day spoiled. You know, so they it's not that they don't care, but they just don't want to deal with it. And, you know, it's just unfortunate because these children who are paying the price at the, you know, Alberta Children's Hospitals and whatnot, uh, you know, they could tell you another story. You know, and it'd be, that's why I seriously wish, I hope everybody gets involved and starts thinking about these kids and stop thinking about themselves for a little while and start thinking about these children out here who need help. And this is in North America. This isn't somewhere else like in some third world country where we already know there's some huge problems going on. We're trying to help them too. But we need to help our own children too. And we need to stop pretending that abuse just doesn't happen. You know, half the time people just don't want to admit it. That Oh, well, how could that, you know, that's not possible. It doesn't happen in our part of town. It doesn't happen in our country. It doesn't happen in our city. Um, it doesn't happen in our province. No, you know what I mean? But it does. And that's a sad fact, you know. And, um, you know, you want to get out and start talking to some survivors and start hearing some of their some of their stories about the abuse that they were that was inflicted upon them, right? Um that's the whole issue, right? And that's why I want to go. Uh, I want. I'm very interested in public speaking and getting the word out to people and 
fighting to stop child abuse, you know what I mean? So, you, you know, I hope the world will be hearing a lot more from me, that's for sure, in the future. But, um, you know, I just want to be one more voice and I, to, to, to get something done, you know what I mean? And I hope everybody will, t- will join in and, and get involved and tune into this. Because child abuse is happening whether people want to admit it or not. One in three girls will be abused uh, sexually under the age of 18, whether it's unwanted sexual touching or molestation or whatever. One in six boys right, will will experience unwanted sexual touching or be sexually molested under the age of 18 or sexually abused in some way. And so, you know, this is wrong. If you're in a room with ten, with, with, with six men, one of you guys, one out of those six possibly or even maybe more, will have been uh, sexually uh, abused as a, as, a, as a child under the age of 18. And in a room of three women, one of you, one out of your three women friends. So if there's three women friends, one of them will have been abused sexually under the age of uh, 18. And that's just a fact. It's, it's just the way it is. It's actually, that's underreported, so it's probably a little bit more than that. So it's almost everybody, like when you think about it. This is why this needs to stop. It's not, uh, it's not not something that we can continue to think oh well it's just the way it goes it's my life uh, I was abused no big deal you know no it is a big deal and it's wrong and the only way we're going to be able to stop it for these children today is to stand up and say no it's wrong we need to stop this so that's why you know I hope everybody will just get involved whatever way that they can and so yeah we just have to make sure that we do report abuse you know this article is great I hope everybody will go check this out on familyviolence.alberta.ca and um they go on to talk about how to, you know, help the child as a trusted adult in the child's life. And they go on to say, you know, how can you help um, if you live in a home where children are neglected, abused, or, or exposed to family violence? And they also talk about um, if you are concerned about a child or young person outside of your home, what you can do, right? And they go on, to, if, if you are a young person living in an abusive home with abuse, so we're going to continue on with this. Uh, we'll, do the, we'll continue on with this on Wednesday night and uh, same time, same place. And um, tomorrow night I'll be on with uh, Donna Shear on Dreamcatchers Talk Radio at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash dreamcatchers. And um, we'll be on for an hour tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, Wednesday night, I'm not sure if Tammy Tankle will be on or not, but um, if not, it'll be Elizabeth or, or myself or, or one of us will do the, do the show. And so, yeah, we appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate you tuning in to my shows. I really, I really do. And if you need anything, just get a hold of me on Blog Talk Radio. You can send me a message or you can, send me, you can uh, contact me on Facebook. I'm on Facebook. And... Uh, various places you can get a hold of me you can check out my book i have a book uh, it's called a life of death the redemption it's my personal story and memoirs it's available as an ebook now it's on lulu.com and i hope everybody will grab a copy and the reason why is because all the pro all the proceeds from that book are going directly to dream catchers for abused children that was my wish not theirs and they are they honored it they said okay so that's the whole issue i want the money to go Stop child abuse to fight this to to win this fight you know against child abuse and so you can pick it up at www.lulu.com that's l u l u www.lulu.com forward slash content forward slash paperback uh, slash book uh, dash I guess right not slash dash uh, forward slash a dash life dash of dash death dash the dash redemption and then forward slash 8500324 or you can just uh, type into your browser Sheer and Potter Books Lulu right Sheer and Potter Books and you can get it there as well because it is a, it, it is uh, under Sheer and Potter Books on uh, Lulu and so yeah it's uh, it's available as an ebook now which makes me happy because a lot of people just don't want to bother ordering the copy and they just want to download it so I hope everybody will read my story and I hope that you will um, if you have been abused know that there is hope and to keep going, do not give up. And also, if you have not been abused, to get involved and help stop child abuse. It is so important, right? Um, we cannot do enough to help these children out here today and and tomorrow and the next day, right? We don't want to see any more children dying at the hands of their parents or caregivers and ending up in the hospital in a lifetime of scars and emotional problems. So, um, yeah, we have to do all we can to get involved. And uh, if you haven't voted for us on Facebook, on Facebook there's a Chase Community Giving and uh, Dreamcatchers is, is sitting number 11 right now for, for a possible $20,000, uh, which we do need. Uh, we really do need that money to continue doing what we do. So um, we appreciate your votes. That's uh, Chase Community Giving on Facebook, uh, Dreamcatchers for Abused Children. Uh, we're sitting at number spot 11, and we hope to get up there to, to the fourth 
spot because we will be able to be eligible for, I think it's $100,000, which would really be a, a good start to getting things going. So we appreciate everything, everyone. Have a great night. Take care of yourselves. I'll be back on tomorrow morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, with one child abuse survivor to another. And uh, just make sure you take care. Keep reaching out. If you need something or you need some resources or references, make sure you get a hold of me or get a hold of a Dream Catchers for Abuse Children volunteer um, or send us an email. Um, just make sure that you do get reach out and get some help if you need some help, okay? And we'll be talking to you real soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.